Hey there, welcome back to my devlog on Spherical, a tower defense game inspired by the Bloons Tower Defense Games. If you want to play the game for free, go down to the description down below or in the comments for the link to the game on itch.io. I would really appreciate that. Thanks. In this episode, I'm going to go over the change from how I was previously implementing a waypoint system for the enemies to move along a path, which was just an empty object containing numerous points in the scene, to a Bezier curve. A Bezier curve, for those who don't know, is a set of discrete control points that define a smooth continuous curve used to approximate real world shapes. This Bezier curve helps make paths easier and more complex without any more work added to it. For example, making a line with the old system would require me to put the points in a linear fashion so that the enemy moves in a line. Pretty simple. In both instances, this is done rather easily. However, if the shape of the path were to be, for example, a curve, then the work put into the older waypoint system would have me putting the, all those points along to follow a crude curve, whereas with the Bezier curve, the curves are built in. Another reason for using the Bezier curve is that I was having issues with my waypoint system where an unfortunate bug occurs when blowing back enemies. Once the enemy is no longer blown back, they need to move normally along the path. This was done by finding the nearest waypoint and continuing normally from there. However, there were cases when they would be near other parts of the path that were further ahead. This would in turn cause the enemies to jump ahead in the path, or sometimes would jump to the end of the path causing instant death depending on the enemy. A nice benefit of using this new Bezier curve system is that we can make our paths for our levels as well. Let's show off how this Bezier curve system works. First we will create an empty game object and set its positions to zero. Now make sure that you have the Bezier path creator package installed and imported into your project. You can get it for free on the Unity Asset Store. I will put a link in the description to get the package as well as a link to the video of the creator Sebastian Log showing how to use it. Now that we have the package in our project, we will add the path creator behavior. Now if you don't see the path immediately, you may need to change some of the visual options. You can find them under display options. You may need to adjust these checkboxes for your scene accordingly. I will adjust my handle scale so it's easier for this demonstration to 3. To orient our path, we can choose one of the three options. I will be using the top down option, the XE, and make further changes later in the 3D mode. So I'm going to be making a simple U shape. Now that I have the shape, I will add the road creator behavior to help visualize this path a bit better. Now that the road for our path is visualized, we need an enemy to go along it. I have this little guy here to help visualize it. Next up, we just need to attach the path follower behavior to the enemy so it can follow the path. Let's play our scene and see what happens. Cool, it works, but as you notice the orientation or rotation of our enemy isn't right. That's because of the XE orientation of our curve. Once changing it to 3D and looking at the normals in our curve, we see the issue. To remedy this, just set the global angle to 90 and you should see all the normals pointing upwards. Cool, and now when we play the scene again, our enemy moves along the path and rotates appropriately. So now we have the base behavior done, moving along a path, but now what? What if I want to blow back an enemy like before? Well, all we need to do is adjust the path follower script to move backwards along the path for a short period of time. So I wrote a function called blowback that sets direction along the path to be negative for one second. Let's test it out. So I'll make sure that the enemy speed is 2 here, and when I activate the blowback function, we can see it move backwards along the path for about a second. Cool, so now I want the enemy to die and deal damage to the player once it's reached the end. Pretty simple to do with the path follower script, it has so much versatility built in. To figure out when we complete the path, we need to know how long the path is. In our path follower script, we just need to call pathcreator.path.length, and boom, we have the length of the path. To check if we are at the end, we just check if distance travel divided by path length is 1. From there, I set a flag that we have completed the path, and from there, call a function called completed path, and inside it, call the destroy function for the enemy and deal damage to the player. Cool, the only other implementation I need is to adjust the path follower speed to its attached enemy class. From there, all the enemies will have varying movement speeds, and if an enemy's speed changes due to attacks or projectiles in the game, the path follower will adjust accordingly. Nice. Everything seems to be fine, but there are some bugs I've noticed. First of all, all enemies, except the plane orb, have child of enemies that are activated upon their death. But when that issue occurs, the enemies go to the start of the path instead of where the parent enemy died. So to resolve this issue, I need to make sure that the distance when the parent enemy dies is carried over to all of its children. After some tweaking, fine tuning, and some crying, I got it to work. Another issue that's still apparent though, is that the enemies don't adjust well to the path depending on their sizes. This is evident when looking at a plain orb and a big poppy orb. 
The big poppy orb is inside the path. This is no good. The simple fix for this was just to create an offset variable to the path and record those values for each orb type. These values are then stored in scriptable objects of the enemies so that they can be easily tweaked later. With that issue fixed, almost everything is good. But there is one last thing I need to work on. The path follower script can't go backwards, at least not yet. So to take inspiration from my blowback code, all we need to do is set our direction negative along a path. But the special thing to keep in mind is that our starting point for this mode is at the end of path length. And what happens when our enemy is at the end? That's right, they die. That's a no-no, that would make the game way too hard. To fix this, what I did was create an enum that checks what direction our enemy is moving, forwards or backwards, and with that, we can use it as a check for the movement of our enemy. Now if we're backwards, all we need to do is set our starting position to the path length, and to check if we completed it, we check if our distance minus path length is zero. And for the forwards movement, we've left it as it was before. But then we have an issue that we had before. When the child of an enemy is spawned, it goes back to the beginning. Why is that? Well, after debugging for an hour or so, I found the culprit. In the start function, I check if the enemy direction is backwards. If it is, then we set the distance traveled equal to the path length. We need to make an extra check if this isn't a child enemy, then set distance traveled. Otherwise, we ignore it. That way, when we set it from the parent, it is no longer overwritten. And with that, I have my path system fully implemented and working far better than the old waypoint system I had before. That's all for this video. If you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like. If you have any questions about the game or any issues found when playing the game, let me know in the comments down below. See you guys next time.